More questions, this is good. If you're ever going to ask questions, this is when you should do it. I'm wondering if anyone else could benefit from a review of the fog, like number 24, the F we of G will, and the G of but, X. But we're not done. G of F. We will. OK, we'll do that next. Right now, we have a specific question about horizontal asymptotes. So now that we've concluded there's no Y intercept, First thing we do is we go to the vertical asymptote and doggone, finally, there is one of those. Go back to the domain. What number did we have to take out? Since this is not an exception, that's your domain. This ends up being the equation of the vertical asymptote. So, the vertical asymptote is given by the equation x equals the number that is taken out of the domain, or the numbers that are taken out of the domain. Here there's only one. And there are some, um, um, some of the rational functions that are exceptions don't have vertical asymptotes. Most of them do, but some don't. But we're not dealing with those. If you take calculus, you'll deal with the exceptions. I don't want exceptions in our class. Not a, not a vertical asymptotes anyway. So vertical asymptote, there's one, x equals zero. A big old vertical line going through x equals zero. And finally, we get to the question here, which is what about horizontal asymptotes? Well, we have to go back to the original function. Here's where you look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator, because it's a number, it's a constant, which is a number with no variable. The degree of the numerator is zero. The degree of the denominator, that's x to the one power. So the degree of the denominator is one. OK, the, de the degree of the numerator degree of num is strictly less than the degree of the denom. Which means the x axis is automatically the horizontal asymptote. And the way we write that is with the equation pa is y equals zero y equals zero is the x-axis. So that's a secret. That's the name of it. So that's one of the rules. What if it was the other way around and it was the X on the numerator and the negative one on the denominator? Then we would actually have Y equals something, right? 
No, actually, there would be if 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 we had if. And we don't, but if we had f of x. Let's say x over 2, how about that? That would be here we have degree 1. Here we have degree 0. When the degree of the num, degree num, is greater than the degree of the denominator, you don't have a um, you don't have a horizontal asymptote. So let's see. How do I stay consistent in how I write that? Here we go. No ha. Huh? OK, thank you. So if now these are the alternatives, if. And I would need a different function to show you that. So let's see if the one above it has that. Well, it does. So let us at least look at this for the sake of the ha. It does it's have okay, a ha. It's okay, but not on the test. <laughs> Yeah, it's not on the test. We're just going to use it as an example for the horizontal asymptote. Well, maybe. This is 1x to the third, right? Here, we're talking about the ha. The degree, let me pull this, scroll up, scroll up. The degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. Right? This is degree three. And this is degree three. So when they're equal, you do this. You have ratio of leading coefficients, and then I'll write out what that is. This is a leading coefficient. No. Oh. Okay. This is a leading coefficient. And this is a leading coefficient. The ratio of the leading coefficients here is 1 over 3. So the ha is y equals 1 third. That's the third rule, or no. I kind of have them, you know, it's, it's whatever book you first learned it out of. So in my head forever,
there. In my head forever, this will always be the first rule. This will always be the second rule. And this will always be the third rule about when you when you don't have a ha. All right, yeah, when you don't have a ha, that's the third rule. So when the degree of the numerator, yeah, but you don't have to know that. They're just three different rules. They don't have numbers. Okay, this might be a stupid question. It's not. But, um, how do you figure out the degrees? Like, I don't understand. How, when you. you have the X and the two, how is that degree zero and X is degree one? I, I don't, I don't know where you find the degrees. Okay. Um, okay. The degree of, where can I write this? I need, yeah, there's a nice empty space right there. The degree of constants. I guarantee almost everybody has that question in their mind and they're going to go out on the internet and look for it or something because they don't want to admit they don't know it. So it's good that you asked. Degree of constants is zero. And there's a reason for that, but just memorize it. The degree of a number without a letter is zero. Okay. The degree of a uh, the degree of a polynomial. Uh, professor. Yes. I have a question that like. Wait, let me finish this, OK, and then ask. OK, go for it. The degree of a polynomial is. The degree. Of. The leading term. Now, what does all that mean? Well. Not a problem, I'll show you. That's a constant. The degree of the numerator is zero. The degree of this polynomial is two because the highest degree term is two. The highest power term, the, the biggest exponent is two. So it has degree two. And the highest degree term gives its degree to the entire polynomial. This on the bottom, if you just look at this by itself, this is a polynomial of degree zero. Up to degree two. This is degree zero. This is degree two. Now, ah, this is a monomial, a one-term polynomial. Its exponent is three. Therefore, this little polynomial has degree three. Meanwhile, here's a three-term polynomial. And the, the biggest exponent is three. So the degree of the entire polynomial is three. That's what degrees are. So we just look for the exponents then? Yes, they determine the degree. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, next question, what was that? In the instance of constants um, with perfect squares like eight or uh, 16, could you not uh, create it like a uh, two degree five or something that effect? You could if you want to make life hard for yourself, but do you want to make? No, no, but because. There still is no letter there. 
OK. So it's still degree zero. Thank you. Thank you for thinking. You're welcome. Good, more questions. This is really good. So since the four equals two, since it doesn't have the X, it, it's a zero degree. Is that what? Yes, okay. absolutely. No X, zero degree. Or I should say no variable. Means degree zero. Or zero degree. How did you get the four and the two squared? Um, I was being asked about it. That okay. would the degree change if you make four into two squared? Oh, and I had to think about it. Um, yes, there's an exponent, but there's no variable. So the degree is still zero. So I have a question about a particular problem that was on the homework I kind of got stumped on and it's OK. I think the next question has to do with uh, fog and golf. But what is yours or are you the person who asked? No, no, I was the one that asked about the HA. Um, oh, the ha and we did that, right? Yeah, this one on my homework was about the ha, but it's. Well, just example, it's X squared minus seven over six X degree four plus seven. One of those type of problems is what I was. OK, here, wait, let me let me get some empty space here. OK, now what is it again? It's X squared plus something. Um, X squared minus seven. Over six X degree four. No, plus. It, oh, it's power four. Uh huh. OK. Power. Plus seven. All right, automatically. The ha is going to be the X axis. Because. The highest power term is two. Therefore, this little binomial, which is a two term polynomial, has degree two. This two and this two are the same thing. While this has degree four. Well, I don't need to do that. Degree four. Because that four gives that polynomial degree four. Now here, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So the ha is the x-axis. It's an automatic thing. Not debatable, but you have to write the equation of the x-axis, which is y equals zero. That's the equation of the horizontal line that is the x-axis. So there are only three rules. OK. The degree of the numerator. Is less than the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator.
and the degree of the numerator. Is greater than the degree. Of the denominator. Here. The ha is y equals zero, which is the x-axis. Here, the ha is y equals the ratio, the fraction of the leading terms, of the leading coefficients. the numbers in front of the highest degree variables. So I need more room to write that. C-O-E-F-F. -F. Okay, and in the third instance, where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, there is no ha. Boom. Just those three cases. Thank you. You're welcome. More. because I know I found this tricky also. So the answer is y equals zero. We would put in the answer box. For this problem? Yes. Yes, you would. Okay, okay, thank you. I was trying to solve it somehow. It makes yeah. sense now, thank you. You're welcome. If there are no more questions about horizontal asymptotes, we're going to move on to composition of functions, Goff and Fogg. So I think it's this way. I'm not sure. After we do that, can we talk about when it says expressions? solve equations, how, we sh how we're supposed to write it, like what the keywords are? Yes. Thank Glad you. Glad to. Goff and Fogg are towards the end. Number 24, I think, is the first one. Okay, great. Thanks. Ooh. There we are. Yes, indeed. All right, find fog and golf. That is f of g of x and g of f of x. And the domain of each. Well, I can already tell you that the domain's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity because these are both polynomials. As long as you're not dividing, you're going to always have negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, now that we've settled that, uh, let's see. Okay. Now, f of x is x plus 4. So, f of g of x is going to equal g of x plus 4. So all I have to do is look and see what g of x is. g 
g of x is 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. 2x squared, okay. Now that is g of x. Okay, so let me do this. And we've still got this plus four we have to add on the end. So we're going to have 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 plus 4. Well, they zero each other out. So our answer is going to be 2x squared minus 7x. And the domain of that, that is a polynomial. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now we're going to go the other way. You said we know that it's negative infinity to positive infinity just simply because it's polynomial, right? Correct. There's no constant. Okay, thank you. That's it, yeah. It's because the graph of a polynomial is smooth and it goes on forever. Well, all that matters is it's connected and it goes on forever. There are no breaks. I'm just trying to grasp the concepts of all no, this that's rather good. than details. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Very good. I need my eraser. There. Okay. Now, G of X is 2X squared minus 7X minus 4. G of F of X is going to be 2 times F of X. Okay, I'm going to have to write bigger. And and my secret weapon. Let's erase this and go do it again. Got it. Okay. Don't do this to me. G of F of X equals two times f of x squared. So I'll be squaring f of x minus seven times f of x minus four. Now f of x, I have to go back and look is x plus 4. So this will, what will that be? So this is going to be 2 times x plus 4 squared minus 7 times x plus 4 minus 4. So that will equal 2 times x plus 4 times x plus 4. After this, let's take a break. 5 or 10 minutes, come back to this, but let's finish this problem. If you can. Minus 7x minus 20 8 minus 
four. Okay, so this will be, now I'm gonna do my usual deal here. X times X, X times four. four times x and four times four, okay? So this will be x squared plus four x plus four x plus four times four, which is 16, minus seven x, Minus, minus 28 minus 4 is minus 32. So this is going to be, don't, don't give in to temptation here. Go ahead and combine these terms. You're less likely to make a mistake. No guarantees. I know from some personal experience. See, this one is taking a little bit longer. All right, now I'm going to distribute the two. I'm going to multiply every term on the inside of the parentheses by two. So I'll have two x squared plus 16x plus 32 minus 7x minus 32. And again, we've got that, that weird thing where we're gonna have 32 minus 32, so our, our constants are vanishing. Meanwhile, we've got 16x minus 7x, that's going to be 9x. So our g of f of x is 2x squared plus 9x, which is also a polynomial, which has domain negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's go over again what a polynomial is. And the best way to define a polynomial is to say what it's not. So a polynomial, I love polynomials. Everybody in math loves polynomials. A polynomial consists of terms that are added together. Here we've got a trinomial because I ran out of room. But you could just go on to infinity. You could have an infinite number of terms. Okay, inside a term, you've got, let's say, I mean, let's just go back to basic language here, numbers and letters. Okay, you've got numbers and letters. multiplied together. Now, I'm not going to go into, you know, like we could do, we did do 
at least an hour lecture on polynomials. I am not going to do that now. But they're multiplied together. Well, other things have stuff like that. So how do you know specifically it's a polynomial? So I'm going to make a, a category, things polynomials don't have. Don't tell other math people I talk that way. I'm not allowed to speak English when I'm teaching math, so it's our secret. Things polynomials don't have. And this is really important because really and truly this is how you tell. The variables, the letters. Don't have fraction exponents. The variables. are not on the bottom of fractions, are not in denominators. So I'm going to say they're not on the bottom of fractions. They can be on the top. The variables are not underneath radicals. That is root signs. or inside, I guess I should say inside. I always thought of them as being under actually, but inside like square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, no matter what the root, you don't have variables inside root signs. Inside Those are the big three. There are no fraction exponents, there are no radicals or root signs, and there are, uh, uh, you don't have any of the X's, you don't have any of the variables uh, on the underside of a radical, um, on the underside of a fraction in a denominator. That's it. That's what a polynomial is. And then finally, and this is only if you're looking at the graph, the graph is smooth. So this, I need to go back up here because this is stuff they don't have. What they do have is nice, smooth graphs. No sharp points. No breaks. That's how you can tell you're dealing with a polynomial. Now, take a break. Let's all take a break and when we get back, I have a question waiting for me and what was the question? Talking about 
uh, expressions, mm -hmm. equations, um, just there keywords and how we're supposed to answer or, or solve or not solve. Okay, great. We'll do that. 